What, what are we doing right now? Man? We are <laughs> walking around the small gym in the dark, trying to find some light so we can get it in. And we have no idea to find some light. And I'm upset. I'm, I'm tired and I really want to work out. I've been out late. Off the Starling, and what Brittany Starling just has the physical ability and the knowledge of where she is. They work it right back to Starling. She gets the basket off the glass and is back. Nice. Good to see Starling. Hail of Ruth Bewegung. Good to be To your rebound position from Starling. That's taken. Off the block. Good avant rebound from Starling. Either way, it's still going to be a challenge. You know, I, I never try to figure anything as being easy. Starling picks up a career high in points. As the to be able to dish the ball off to Brittany there. Did you see it again? She powers that one up, draws the foul, is able to get it in with the foul. What drives you? Um, what's, what's the one key motivating force um, for you becoming the person you are now and who you're going to be in the future? The one driving force that I have is um, I look around and I see uh, girls, or not even just girls, uh, kids and students like me who have so much, you know, that they want, I know they want to do and um, not necessarily like the means to do it or like maybe not the right motivating forces around them to do it. Mm -hmm. So it kind of keeps me focused because I want to be that for them. And I've been told so many times that um, and it's, it's crazy because people tell me all the time, oh, you motivate me, you do this and you do that. And I'm like, I don't understand what it is that I do, but I guess me just being me, and if that's what it takes to motivate you, then I'll do that. And, you know, every day it's like, you know, I'll sit and I'll watch certain people, I'll talk to people, and, you know, they'll tell me that. So I'm like always in the back of my mind, okay, what can I do to be better for them? Or how can I be what I wish I had when I was growing up? So I want to be exactly what I wish I had for them. So that's really the main thing that uh, keeps me motivated and focused because I just like I have so much to offer and I don't want to be average. You know, I don't want to just be sitting around like, man, I wish I could have done this or, man, I let this person down. No, I'm going to be so much better than that. So that's really kind of what keeps me focused, 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 focused. My name is Brittany Starling, and welcome to my state. What is one thing um, you feel like um, you need to say to the younger generation? Um, oh, it's a lot I feel like I say, but one thing I feel like I could say is um, be okay with being a standout. You know, I felt for myself like there were things that my friends could do that I would try to do, and I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it because. That's not what's that's not what's for me, mm -hmm. you know. So I knew something was different, you know. I was always that one that was in the gym 24/7, and all my friends were like, "Uh oh, ball is life." Like, ball, like making a joke <laughs> of it, but I knew that that's where I needed to be because I knew what it is that I wanted to do, uh -huh. and look where it's gotten me. So I would say to these kids, man, stay focused and be okay with being a standout because once you do that, you rid yourself of so many negative things and you rid yourself of unnecessary situations you get to focus on who you are mm -hmm. and understand that everybody can't go with you life is going to change for you but stay focused and be okay with who you are because there is something good that's going to come out of it mm -hmm. you know don't worry and don't stress and try to follow the crowd understand that you are different for a reason mm -hmm. and get focused on finding out that reason transitioning you know uh, a little a little on the same way but a little on the same passage um being a Christian, um, being a Hooper, being overseas, mm -hmm. not really having a church family or a home church, mm -hmm. it's t I know it's tough. It's tough. I know it's tough. Mm -hmm. Kind of describe and walk mm -hmm. us through that. The thing about it, when you're away from it for so long, it gets to the point where your mind just goes everywhere, you know. And I'll admit, my first few months there, I was on I was on this battle, like this this mm -hmm. battle within myself because. 
I wasn't, I, I couldn't go to church on Sunday. I couldn't go to Bible study on Wednesday, Thursday. So I was like, man, now what do I do? Yeah. And instead of me going to what I knew, which was going to read my Bible, since yeah. I wasn't in church, I found other things to get into. And that allowed me to, my attention left that yeah. and took me this place. Uh -huh. and, but the thing about it is that foundation, <laughs> when that foundation is in you, <laughs> Oh, you're gonna bring that's your butt back. back. You're gonna yeah. come back. Nah. And that's what happened with me. I, I felt like I drifted so much. Somehow, some way, I think, I don't know if I read a post or something like that, but I found my way right back to my Bible. And mm -hmm. I got to the point where I started watching my services online again. Mm -hmm. I My uncle is a preacher, so I would watch his live um, things on Facebook mm -hmm. and just listen to him talk. Yeah, and, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and it took me, I got once I got back into that rhythm, I made sure I stayed with it on Sundays. Even though I'm six hours ahead, I made sure I watched my service. I made sure I read my Bible and it's I stayed dope. on top of it. It's really, the thing about being overseas is you have, it, it allows you to figure out who you are truly, you mm -hmm. know, and what it is that you really have inside you. Because mm -hmm. once that word is put inside you, it doesn't leave because you will find your way back. Mm -hmm. The world and things of the world and all these other things that are going on right now, all that stuff is going to fall one day. But one thing that's going to always be here is the word of God. And if that's in your heart and in your scripture no one, and, and in your, your soul, no one's going to take that away from you. So, hello, like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Do you feel as if you know what I'm saying? There is a supreme calling on your life, but do you feel as if you already know what it is? And I feel like you already know what it is, and you already know uh, what you're what you're here to do. Um, I I do agree. I do think there is a calling on my life. I think that I'm still working toward figuring that out truly, like, okay. like what exactly that calling is, because mm -hmm. like I said, every day is a journey. So I'm still trying to figure me out. But at the same time, I do think that I was placed here to help other people because somehow, some way, I always end up playing. Even though I'm not trying, I'm either I'm playing that leadership role. Mm -hmm. How do I go from being a collegiate athlete, being a, a, a leader, to a foreign country, and they're still looking at me to be that leader? You know what I mean? And it's kind of weird. God, it's like exactly he keeps putting me in these positions, and I even question. I'm like, God, why do you keep why do you keep doing this? All my life, I've been in the same position over and over and over. Like, are you trying to tell me something? Mm -hmm. So it takes me to have to sit down, shut up, and listen to what it is that he's telling me. So mm -hmm. I do truly believe that I'm supposed to help other people. But in what particular way that is, I'm still trying to figure that out. But I do think that that is my calling. It's, it's, it's not about me. It's more than myself. It's about the people around me and mm -hmm. how I can make them better or how I can help them in whatever way. So, And because I'm so unselfish, I'll put anybody before me any day. And that's, that's, just, that's just in me. That's dope. So, that's dope. That's <laughs> dope, man. Listen, people. This is one of the dopest <laughs> people, honestly, that I know that, um, you know what I'm saying, I came in contact with. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm just so grateful to have you in my life again. Call you my big sister. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Sister, my little sister, brother, man. I love you. Sister, we get it, man. I know, I love you so much. <laughs> 124 in the morning. And we just finished some work. Got it in. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm about to go home. Call it a night. And get back at it tomorrow. Or in a few hours, I guess you could say. So, thank you. Shout out to Wayne's World. Know me.